how this works. It was August of 2006 when I first learned that the tremendous success Starbucks has had is probably not due to the quality of the coffee, location of their stores, or speed of their service. At the time, I was senior vice president of marketing at Aramark Corporation, a big food service fil- uh, company in Philadelphia. And at the time, Aramark was a licensee of Starbucks. We operated 75 Starbucks stores on college campuses around the country. The problem was, at the time, that Aramark was about to lose their license because we were not delivering the kind of customer experience that Starbucks demanded. So in a last-ditch effort to preserve the relationship, Starbucks invited a team of executives from Aramark to fly out to Seattle and spend a few days getting dipped in how they deliver the experience that they did. And I was fortunate to be among the group that went on that trip. And we expected to hear how they chose the location of their stores and how they roasted their coffee beans and how they designed their service and product and all of that. And we certainly heard a lot about it. But that wasn't really what struck us. What struck us as most different and unique was how they recruited, managed, and motivated hourly employees. That was what was different. They told us about something called the Little Green Apron Book, which, as the name suggests, was a little book that fit in the pocket of an apron. And inside that book were five ways of being. And these were things that employees were expected to demonstrate every day, not just to customers, but frankly to each other, and even more importantly to each other. And inside that book was a description of each way of being, things like being welcoming and genuine and considerate and knowledgeable. And there were five little cards, business-sized cards, that had a little description of each of those ways of being on them, and the back were just blank lines. And they were expected to catch each other in the act of doing these every day. And they would present these cards to one another. Thanks for picking up that shift for me. Offering an encouraging word to someone who's having a rough day. Remembering a customer by name. And they would present these to one another. And at the end of the day, they would all be put in little pockets in the back room. You see that apron there with little pockets. Each pocket had a name on it. And they would present six or seven of these every day. And what really surprised us, this was not just one of those nice ideas that sat on a shelf or in a drawer. This was a big part of how they operated every day. Recognizing, encouraging this warmth and competence to demonstrate to one another within the organization, and then to customers as well. And then at the end of the month, they would gather up these cards, they'd send them to the district office, and they would be written up into stories, stories that would be shared across the organization to celebrate, reinforce, and encourage this behavior. And there was one particular story that stuck with us. It was about a store on the West Coast who had a regular customer named Pete. Now, Pete was an elderly gentleman who'd come in a couple of times a week, have his coffee, read the paper in the corner for an hour or so, and then head home. Everybody knew Pete. They would welcome him when they saw him come in. And this went on for a few years. And then for about two weeks, Pete didn't come in. And they started to ask each other, hey, has anybody seen Pete? I think he has a daughter in L.A. I think maybe he's visiting her. Maybe he's on vacation. A few more weeks go by, and still no Pete. But then one afternoon, a young woman came in. And she said, does anyone here know a customer named Pete? And they said, sure, we know Pete. Where's he been? Is he on vacation? She said, actually, Pete is my dad. I'm sorry to say he had a heart attack a few weeks ago, and he passed away. And so I'm in town going to his apartment to put his affairs in order. And I found something in his apartment that really confused me. In his apartment were two big bags. And in those bags were Starbucks cups that said things like, have a nice day, come back soon, hope you feel better. And apparently these meant so much to my dad that he couldn't bear to throw them away. So I just wanted to come and thank you for the difference you've been making in my dad's life. That's what we should really be thinking about. We shouldn't be focused so much on data and content. We should be thinking about people and stories and making a lasting difference in the life of our customers and our employees. That's where loyalty comes from. We'll get all the other growth loyalty, consistency, purchase, repeat, along with that. The highest point that we can aim for is make a lasting difference in the life of another person. That's where we get the behavior that we're looking for. It costs us less and is more profitable and causes us to grow. That's what warmth and competence can do for your company and your brand.